Like, I, I, I get it. Most of you, I am not the only voice that you listen to. I may be your pastor here at Parkwood, but the reality is you go home all week long listening to your favorite YouTube preachers, the celebrity pastors, you got your TikTok voices, your podcast, and I'm not even saying all those things are wrong at all. I'm just saying there's many voices that you are filling your head with. How do you know who's a sheep and who's a wolf? How do you know who's a good teacher and who's a false teacher? How, or just the title, how do you spot the wolves out there? Well, Jesus is actually going to help us. He's going to answer this directly for us in the very next verse. Let's keep reading. Verse 16. He says, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? The answer is no, by the way. Verse 17, likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. I, I, I love this. Jesus is like the king of word picture. In a lot of his teaching, he's, he's just constantly, you think that like I came up with props. No, Jesus did, okay? He's the one bringing these images, 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 and he moves from the, like the wolf in sheep's clothing and says, all right, now here's how you tell who's a wolf and who's not. He says, it's by their fruit. In the same way that you know a tree by its fruit is how you will determine a false prophet or a good prophet. Like, it's, it's pretty simple. This is not a trick question, by the way. If you walk up and you see a tree with apples on it, it is a... Oh, that was good. Some of you are still cautious in answering because you think <laughs> I'm going to, like, trick you. It's not a trick. If you walk up to an orange, with, or, or, an orange or a tree with oranges on it, it's a what? Orange. That's right. You know a tree by its fruit. In the same way... The only way that you can actually identify a true prophet from a false prophet is from their fruit, which is the million-dollar question right now. So what is that? How do we spot a wolf? What, what is the fruit that we should be looking at? Well, their fruit is in what they teach, and it's also in how they live. There's two different things here that you need to evaluate uh, how they live, and what they teach. We'll start with the teaching one. If you're taking notes, just write this down, that you need to look at what they teach. When the early church was being birthed, it's recorded in the book of Acts. Amazing book. I might later this year go back into it. I, we did a little study in 2019, but it's so good. Anyway, book of Acts. Acts chapter 17. Paul goes into this kind of mid-sized, smaller city called Berea, and he goes into the synagogue, he's dealing with the Jews, and he's presenting the gospel that Jesus is the Messiah, and he's giving them all this reason in the scriptures. And you know what, what, it, what it doesn't say? It doesn't say that when Paul showed up in Berea and gave them the gospel, that they immediately received it because of the reputation of Paul. It doesn't say that they thought, hey, this is the Paul who's been planting churches in all these cities. This is the Paul whose signs and miracles have accompanied him. No. It, it says that when he presented the gospel, day by day, they went back into the scriptures to see if what he was saying was true. And they were right for this. And if they had to do that for Paul, man, you got to do that for me, okay? Like, like, hear me, do not believe something just because I say it. Do not believe something just because your favorite preacher on YouTube says it. Believe it because you know it to be true. Which means you gotta, you gotta swim in the scriptures. Like for some of us, just call it what it is, like, like, the, the, our scriptures, like, it's an ocean. It is an ocean of depth about the one from whom we were made, and we treat it like a kiddie pool. 
We just go ankle deep. You know, we just kind of dip our toe. No, you got to dive in. You got to dive into the word. You got to study the word. You got to, like, th- like, hear me, hear me. Part of my job, part of my calling is to stand up here and to preach the word of God to you. But never at the expense of you not doing it yourself. I'm not Jim Jones. I'm not the holy man at the top that hears from God so that you don't have to. I'm the pastor of this church. (laughs) And I do my best to hear from God and preach his word. But friend, everything that I bring to you on a Sunday morning, this should not be your, like, like all the food you eat for the week. This should just be supplemental to what you're already going through. You want to know how to, how to assess the, the, the fruit? We first got to look at what they are teaching. And, and if you're not in the word, if you're not consumed in around the person of Jesus, man, you might miss it. And you might fly to Guyana and end up in a commune one day. Like, you need to know the word. You look at what they teach. Secondly is this, that you need to look at how they live. The same Paul, the Apostle Paul, who went to Berea, also wrote a letter to a group of churches in the region of Galatia. And it was there that there's the very famous fruit of the Spirit. When, when we receive God, like he takes up residence inside of us, Paul says, yeah, there's a fruit that comes from that. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Like, like he lists, these are the very particular fruits that actually come from God taking up residence in you. But friend, if you follow my life and you realize that, man, just like, I'm not living up to that. Like, like yeah, beware. Now, now, I'm not talking perfection. Like, we need to clarify this. Because some of you are about to walk out the church next week when you see me make a mistake. Like, if you hang out with me long enough, I promise... Just go on the expressway with me when somebody's in the fast lane, but they're doing 90. Um, you're going to see some fruit fall off my tree, okay? Like, like there are moments <laughs> that, like, I'm not, I'm not going to get it right all the time, you know? But, but what this is more getting at here is this idea of, like, if you walk with me constantly— and you see that that list from Galatians is just not evident. I'm not loving. I'm actually, like, vengeful. It, it, like, I'm, I'm not patient. I'm quick-tempered. You know, I'm, I'm just an aggressive, abusive man. And then I'm getting up in the pulpit and trying to act like everything's okay. I just need to tell you, friend, I might not be who you think I am. And the onus is on you. It's like this idea. You got you to gotta watch out. Jesus says, how you spot a wolf it's amazing. He says, it's not by how many followers they have or they don't have. It's not by the level of charisma or lack thereof. And get this. He says, you can't even recognize them by their gifts. It's like, worship team, come on back up. Even people's gifts, leaders' gifts can be completely misleading. Look how Jesus finishes the text in verse 21. It says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Watch this. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and drive out demons in your name and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Just sit in that for a minute. You know what's really interesting here? Jesus says when when trying to figure out who's true, who's false, you know, he says, man, even their gifts can be misleading. Hear me, one day there are going to be many prophets and pastors and teachers and leaders who will stand before God and who will say, I did this, I did this, I did this, I've got gifts. And Jesus is going to say, I don't know who you are because you didn't have fruit. 
you know, this whole gifts thing, I, I said it in the nine, but it's, it's true. I actually think those of us in the Pentecostal charismatic church need to pay attention to this more than most groups. Because we love somebody with gifts, don't we? And we get that person, that personality, that, that leader, and all of a sudden there's signs and wonders and there's stuff, and then we just immediately assume because of the gift, look at them, let's follow them. And Jesus says, yeah, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. And can I just tell you, like, like most weeks, I sit under the weight of the text for like an entire week, sometimes weeks, And as the pastor of this church that I believe that God has called me here for this season, as the primary teacher to this church, what we just read haunts me. It haunts me. Because, and please hear my heart behind this, I know that on some level I'm gifted. And I don't mean that arrogantly. Like, I just mean like the scriptures are true. God gifts the church. And on some level, he has gifted me to do what I do on this stage. I walk under an anointing of God when I'm doing my job and in this place, I know that. And what I don't wanna do is get to the end and stand before God one day and said, yeah, look at my gifts, God. Look at all these things that I was able to do. <laughs> no, I wanna stand there on that day only in the confidence, not of what I have done, but what Christ has done for me. And I pray that that's your prayer too.